the 343 hint at us that we're not going to see anything at the Xbox Bethesda showcase. If you guys remember this tweet from Unishack here, the community manager, that the team is currently heads down focusing on quality of life updates for Halo Infinite and preparing for the campaign network co-op flight next month. We'll have more to share about the June drop pod, which we just covered here yesterday on the channel. If you guys missed that video, you might have because of all the live streams that were going live on YouTube here. So I got buried within the algorithm a little bit. A lot of really great information within that video right there. Uh, so, but the thing is, what I'm going to talk about here a lot is, should we be disappointed that there was no Halo Infinite within that Xbox Bethesda showcase? And from my opinion, yeah, like Halo was one of the biggest games that Microsoft has ever created. And the fact there was nothing Halo related, not even like talking about season two to you know continue on the hype with that, or even talking about the next interference uh, story upbeat that's gonna be coming here in J July for Halo Infinite, uh, just nothing, which was just like, it was a shock to me. Now I know a lot of people point to this image saying like, oh, if you're down and out about nothing being shown on the 12th, well, we have this leak right here, not necessarily leaked by a breadcrumb if you wanna call it that, but looking like there might be something on June 14th. Again, if there is any kind of good information to share with you guys, I will share it here on the channel. The idea here is that the, basically this was like a glitch image that happened during that season two live stream with Jerry Hook and Unishack, where the two numbers, the four numbers that we see right here are 0427, which was the date of that live stream. And then the other two numbers were 0614, which would be June 14th. Now, either these are just random numbers that they decided to choose, or these actually are a hint to something coming on Tuesday. But the thing is though, in my opinion, like why would 343 hide any kind of big announcement for Halo Infinite on the like after stream because Xbox has done these type of streams before for the last few years when it comes to their showcase live stream where they have the big announcement live stream and then a couple days later they have the extended version of that live stream where basically they bring on developers they kind of just reiterate things that we saw maybe explain things in a little bit better detail and stuff like that but nothing really new happens within these uh, extended cuts of these live streams so I don't really expect to see any kind of news. If it is anything Halo related, probably just reiterating the stuff that's happening with season two uh, that would be my guess because if there was going to be some big announcement like campaign DLC, the battle royale of Tatanka and all these kind of things that we've been talking about for months and months, uh, that would definitely be shown yesterday at the Sunday live stream, but not on this Tuesday live stream, which is like during the week. And obviously I will keep a close eye on it. If anything good happens from that live stream, I will share it with you guys here on the channel. But I just don't have high expectations for that. And I think just this first year of Halo Infinite, guys, is going to be, well, a pretty straightforward year worth of content. Nothing too crazy. Now, the only thing Halo related that we really got within this Xbox Bethesda showcase was the Pelican is now in Flight Simulator. And I gave it a chance uh, last time just real briefly to play around with it. It is really fun. I do plan to do a live stream with this because I love Flight Simulator and I love Halo. So kind of putting these two and two together would be pretty fun. Uh, definitely will give it like a nice go to see like how to actually properly fly this Pelican because I was doing all the quick shortcuts just to get it up in the air. Uh, but this was an amazing update. It is free if you're on like Xbox Game Pass, this is your chance to, well, get a chance to play some Flight Simulator. In some other Halo related news, it looks like King of the Hill is going to be changed next month. Uh, someone tweeted out here saying, gotta change King of the Hill overtime rules and just tweeted at Tasha. And Tasha did reply to this, who is the head of HCS, said the MP team is targeting a change for next month. So we'll see how the overtime rules play out when it comes to King of the Hill. Once we get that update, most likely it'll come within a drop pod, most likely in July when it comes to something like that. Once we get some more information, I'll share it with you guys here on the channel. And of course, yesterday we had the Xbox Bethesda showcase, showcasing all this stuff right here. All this stuff is happening within the next... 12 months, that's basically from now until June of next year. This is what's happening with Xbox. A lot of great stuff. Again, there's that little bit of Halo right there, season three, you see right there. But uh, um, other than that, like we had some really great showcase. I thought the Xbox Bethesda showcase itself was really well done. It wasn't a whole lot of talking. It wasn't, didn't really feel like a press kind of thing. It just felt like, hey gamers, here is some really cool stuff that's coming. Here's the actual games themselves. Either it was like a cinematic trailer or gameplay trailer, a little bit of both. I mean, Phil Spencer did say before the Bethesda showcase that this was gonna be the most gameplay 
gameplay ever shown in a showcase and i would totally agree with that like the sh xbox but that's a showcase as a whole besides the lack of halo was really awesome in my opinion and I, there's some really cool standouts within this whole thing now to me what really stole the show for the xbox but that's a showcase was starfield and i think that microsoft kind of knew that like what they have is something pretty special with this game it just looks absolutely incredible with all the kind of stuff you could play around with like the amount of environments that we had within this were insane they just look absolutely beautiful absolutely unique as well you can definitely tell it's built off of the old uh bethesda engine they've used for like skyrim and fallout and stuff like that so it definitely has those familiar aspects to it as well um, also, this like the um, scale of this game is absolutely absurd. They mentioned there's over a hundred star systems with a thousand planets you can travel to and land anywhere you want to on the planet. I mean, that's a sci-fi RPG dream right there. I mean, it's kind of like on the same scale of like No Man's Sky, but you actually will have like a coherent story tied to the whole aspect of the gameplay and stuff like that, which is just, sounds like there's so much replayability. Starfield really does seem to be like a standout game. I just really hope that it doesn't come out as buggy and broken as some other big AAA games have been doing recently. Uh, I mean, that's probably the big reason why it got delayed till the first half of 2023, which I mean, after seeing this game, I'm going like, okay, I can see why it was delayed because the scale of this game is absolutely absurd. I mean, there's even some aspects of the definitely feel very Fallout like with like the weapon play. Some of the animals, like the crabs that we saw right there, was definitely very like Fallout like right here, as you can see. Uh, but also kind of like it feels like if it's like Fallout meets like Star Citizen in a way kind of thing slash like No Man's Sky in a way like it's a lot of similarities between those two which is just really crazy but like this game just looks to be something really unique and really awesome. One thing that really surprised me was how you can customize your ship like really a lot of customization to make it everyone's ship look unique and different it looks like they have different aspects of like each part of your ship does something to give it some different aspects to how you play the game and stuff like that. Um, that is just absolutely incredible. I mean, like, this is why I'm so excited about Starfield, man. And this was recently shared on the Bethesda Twitter itself saying, yes, dialogue in Starfield is first person and your character does not have a voice. This is basically some feedback, which is what they had from the games like Fallout 4, where they started having the voice protagonist. A lot of people did not seem very into that kind of stuff when it comes to their Bethesda games. Uh, it definitely seems like the facial animations have been improved a lot, which is one of my biggest gripes when it comes to uh, Bethesda RPG that they do feel very like robotic and stale it does still have that a little bit but uh definitely cool to see that like definitely return more to the roots of like the rpg elements make it so it's more kind of like you in the shoes rather than you playing as somebody which is kind of the whole point of a role-playing game so if you guys want to see some more starfield coverage let me know in the comments down below or if you're new to the channel and missing any content from me recently check out this playlist right here i got a link to all my gaming news and informational videos right there thanks so much for watching greatly appreciate it catch you on the next one peace out